everybody. I forgot we were doing this today. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I purposefully set up the recording. You know I can't lie to you. Uh, but I'm, I'm not really in the mood to be to be recording today, to be honest. It's been a real stressful week. I've got deadlines up the waz. But I have finally finished reading this book. And because it was viewer recommended, I felt honour bound to get that review done as soon as possible. Which viewer recommended it, I have no idea, because I'm a bad podcaster. And I didn't write it down, um, but please identify yourself in the comments. I did try searching my emails in the comments, but um, yeah, I came up empty. But whoever you were, you recommended The Witchfinder's Sister by Beth Underdown, and I bought it as soon as you mentioned it, and have just finished reading it. So the back of the book saith, The number of women my brother Matthew killed, so far as I can reckon it, is 106. 1645, when Alice Hopkins' husband dies tragically, she returns to Manningtree, the small Essex town where her brother Matthew still lives, but home is no longer a place of safety. Whispers are spreading of witchcraft and the terrible fate awaiting the women accused, and at the heart of it all stands just one man. To what lengths will Matthew's obsession drive him, and what choice will Alice make when she finds herself at the very heart of his plan? So obviously from that, backdrop you know it's a historical novel it's sort of fictionalizing the story of matthew hopkins uh, the witch finder very key involved in the witch hunts in essex which is very close to where i live so you know a pretty famous figure and this is about his sister and reading the author's notes at the back basically we know he had three brothers and then at some point a historical document mentions that he has like six siblings some of whom may have been girls so aside from that kind of general fact Alice is completely invented and like the details of her life have been invented as well like her husband and all of that um so it gives the writer obviously a lot to work with because they can make up quite a lot of stuff and they talk about the the stuff that they've invented and the stuff they've kept the same what they've kept the same broadly speaking is basically the details of the witch trials including the names of the accused uh, and the the confessions that they gave and the crimes of which they were accused all of that seems to be kind of legitimate and based on reality and the rest of it like alice's narrative is completely invented so it's an interesting mix of like the fictitious and the factual um the story itself begins basically with her traveling home talking about how her husband recently died there's some talk about the civil war he was involved in making guns for it and one of them blew up in his face which is very unfortunate and so she returns home to, to live with her brother now that her parents have both passed away uh, which at that point is her own father and also her stepmother who is matthew's mother um to, to live with matthew she's also pregnant although she has like lost pregnancies in the past i'm going to trigger warm because there is quite a graphic well not too graphic but like i think it would be upsetting to read a uh, scene of a miscarriage there's also just a lot of kind of gaslighting emotional and physical abuse and shades of also sexual abuse uh, in some of the descriptions of like the the different things that are done to the accused which is so go into that forewarned uh, now, I kind of went into this book and I was like, okay, I, I, I feel like I'm going to enjoy this. I've read historical novels in the past. I've written some. I like them as a genre. That's fine. It's also got all this stuff about the witch trials in it. What's not to like? Unfortunately, I was largely bored for about 60% of this novel. And that was a real shame because I feel like the subject matter is so viscerally unpleasant and shocking uh, and awful and needs to be like remembered and and kind of thought about that it, it really shouldn't be portrayed in like a boring way and it may have been just me because i've come off quite a lot of thrillers recently um because i'm like reading those because that's what i write now so i'm just trying to immerse myself in them and this is obviously a lot slower than you know your traditional thriller like obviously because it's a different genre but I did find that the, the opening of the book, there's a lot of setup, and the first, just over the first half of it, is a lot of introspection. It's a lot of Alice meeting people and observing people, observing her brother, thinking about her relationships in the past, her relationships in the present. It's very samey. There's a lot of her just like going from her room to downstairs to eat food, observing the servants, going for walks or just being in her room, and a lot of it is very methodical. 
I would say. It kind of plods along. And there's a reason for it. Like, all the details that are being set up are very important because, you know, a lot of the story is about Alice's experiences of her brother and their history as a family. But it doesn't really feel like things really kick off until way past the halfway point. And by that point, I was skimming quite a lot because I was kind of bored of the of the mundane details. So get prepared for, for kind of a slog going in, uh, I think, is, is all I can really say. I'm going to get quite spoilery when I discuss the ending as well. And I will say that the ending did make the, the build-up mostly worthwhile. I felt about 98% happy with the ending and I felt like the payoff was pretty decent to the to the setup so if you'd like to go away and read the book and you don't want the ending spoiled for you because it will kind of ruin the whole point of the book go away and read it now in the meantime I'm going to talk about it to people who either have already read the book or who have no intention of going to read it so basically Alice moves back in with her brother um Matthew and obviously he's obsessed with witch hunts and we learn that he was a very strange child and very kind of serious and odd he had weird fixations and he has had these burns on his body since he was a baby and it was believed that this was caused by his wet nurse not watching him properly and he crawled into the fire and became burned and this seems to be kind of like the key to a mystery here because a lot of people's accounts of this supposed event do not add up we don't know if it was the wet nurse because she denies it now that they've like tracked her down spoken to her he has their father's diary that has cut pages out of it so presumably they held some of the truths of the event the mother-in-law of um alice like her, her dead husband's mother has a different account again of what happened and her mother is or her stepmother matthew's mother is dead and can't really refute uh, anything that is being said about her but it's confusing but it all seems to add up to the fact that matthew does not like women he has this kind of hatred of women it's a very incel kind of logic that comes out a lot later on in the book but he basically thinks that all women are whores and evil and treacherous and that is driving quite a lot of his interest in the witch hunts he wants to punish women he wants them to die and he's like kind of shoring up his own social status it's kind of confusing as to whether he actually really believes in witches he does seem to believe in the evil of women i don't know that he believes that, that is necessarily a supernatural evil although there is one instance where he seems afraid of some sort of supernatural power but he he does just generally does not, not like women and the book and this is kind of my second gripe with it falls into that category of book which i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with but it is not a category that i enjoy which is where you know something bad is going to happen to the main character from the beginning and then they do everything in their power to just dance around pissing people off who can hurt them and you get it a lot in like witch trial books because the you know, main character is kind of walk around doing things that make it very likely that they will be accused of being a witch and you're just like will you just calm down and and not keep sticking your head above the parapet because it will get blown off you feel like they are caught in danger and it's a very tense and unpleasant read and i get that that tension might be interesting to some people some people are probably thriving on this type of book and really enjoying it they know that there's foreshadowing all of this bad stuff's going to happen they can't wait for it I, on the other hand, find it incredibly nerve-wracking and don't enjoy reading that type of book. So that was kind of my second big gripe with it. But basically, Alice goes around doing things that piss Matthew off and we get a little bit more about their history and we find out more about him and how far this witch trial thing goes. Because at the beginning, Alice is like, oh, people get accused of witchcraft occasionally and then it gets chucked out of court because, like, no one believes in that stuff. It's just a way to, like get people in trouble no one gets executed for it you just go to jail for a bit and then they let you out and then she becomes aware that this time it's different that things are being taken more seriously and it's going badly and in the end she ends up having to travel around Essex and sort of surrounding towns with Matthew to help examine the women who are being accused of witchcraft and she tries in some small ways to kind of undermine his power and prevent him from getting hold of some of these women but is basically kind of useless um she, she can't do anything uh she can't run away either he sort of stops that from happening 
Uh, so she's kind of in this sort of stasis. And then she has this big outburst where she rants and raves in front of him about how he's probably not even related to her father. He's a bastard child. There's all this other stuff about, you know, his mother being possibly mentally ill. And she's like, well, you clearly have inherited this mental illness of hers. And she says this in front of his friends, like the, the gentry people who he's trying to impress. And he uses this as proof that she is mad and he locks her in the attic. And that happens really suddenly. And like she's being taken care of by this kind of nurse ratchet, like ratchet, like servant woman who's kind of a collaborator uh, with Matthew and hates women as much as he does because she's kind of a turncoat. And... You know, she's the only one taking care of Alice, and Alice is locked up in the attic. And then there's a jump of about a year. So we're at like Christmas tide, 1640-something, and then it's like November of the next year or something. So a big jump in time. Um, I'm not sure how the calendars worked back then. Were we on our current calendar then? Maybe. But yeah, we big jump in time and suddenly she's been left alone and the servant's not coming anymore and she's run out of food and water and she's wondering what's happening. And then suddenly there's people in the house and they're bringing Matthew in because he's had a little bit of an accident and he seems to be a little bit worse for wear. And I don't know that we actually know what happened to Matthew Hopkins. I think there's a lot of different theories about it. Like, I read a book once, I think it was one of the, like, Essex murder books, where they kind of followed this theory that he went to America and kicked off their witch hunts, which the back of this book says has now been debunked. Um, but people have said, like, he died at sea or various other things. So I don't really think we know for sure how he died. Um, but it, it, in this case, he's left to the tender mercies of his sister, who murders him, <laughs> because you would. Uh, and that was kind of the ending that I was like, yes, this is the ending that I want. This is satisfying. He he done her wrong. She went through all of this bullshit. Now he did. I'm excited about that. I was less excited about the fact that the, the other the servant got away scot-free. Like, she'd basically been, like, a kind of accomplice, and she didn't get any punishment. So that was not as satisfying, but, you know, pretty good satisfaction rating. Um, now, one thing I haven't mentioned is the, the sort of ongoing mystery with the book. Because it's my third gripe. And <laughs> basically, when Alice returns to Manning Tree, she's told that her mother's golden ring and her Bible, which are like her two most prized possessions, have been left to Alice's mother-in-law and not to Alice, which they were meant to be. But she has been left all of her mother's, oh, stepmother's old clothes, which don't fit her because her stepmother was this little tiny woman and Alice is quite tall. So she's like, why has she left me a load of dresses that I won't even fit in? What is the point of this? And then we're told, you know, that she most particularly left her the dresses. And then her mother-in-law asks, oh, she left you the dresses. Is that all? In a very kind of leading way. And then we get told by another servant that the day before her stepmother's death, she was sat up mending her clothes and sewing. And it's mentioned so many times and it was incredibly frustrating to me because obviously something's hidden in the dresses and we want to find out what it is. And at the same time, we become aware that Matthew is looking for a poppet, which has been made, and which we find out was probably sold to his mother so that she could conceive him. But we're told that the kind of law on these poppets is that if something bad happens to the poppet that was used to conceive a child, that child will die. And so he's like frantic. He's looking for it, suggesting that he does, in fact, believe in witchcraft and he believes in the magic of this object. And... Finally, when she's locked up in the attic, Alice is like, I'm going to put on one of these dresses because I'm so malnourished from being locked away that I can put it on. And if it's too short, no one's going to see me because I'm locked in an attic. And sewn into it, she finds the poppet. And in a moment of desperation, of hatred for the brother that has done this to her, she shoves it into a bowl of washing water so that it drowns. And then when Matthew is brought to the house, he was apparently being drowned in a pond by an unseen figure who was not then captured. Curious. So there's that kind of little nod to witchcraft at the end there. But it did annoy me that it was so obvious that there was something hidden in the dresses and she didn't find it for so long. And then we come to my fourth gripe. 
which is probably again just a me thing like most of these are you know just obviously it's all personal opinion on the book um so we've got that kind of satisfying ending she has killed her brother with magic but also kind of with a pillow that she smothered him with so you know he's dead she's free of him she's free of the the house that she's been locked in the servant isn't there i'm assuming that she she like leaves now and uh, although she doesn't like inherit any property or anything she goes back to london where she lived with her husband and she gets a job there and she is content but then at the end she writes a letter um because one of the nice servants has gone to america and is like hey if you want to come to america i've married really well and now i need a servant so no shade but former boss would you like to be my servant and come to america and be free of you know the civil war and all the the bad experiences you've had in england and alice is like oh cool i'd love to go to america so i'm moving to a nice little town called salem and although it makes sense in a kind of way like i'm not sure as a writer that i would have been able to resist doing that is the thing because it's right there you know she stumbled from one witch hunt to another the timings lined up you know we could send her to salem and oh no same shit different day but at the same time it does kind of ruin the satisfying ending because you know she was free she was fine and now she's walking straight back into the jaws of the trap and it's not a very positive ending um because you know that you know she's escaped once what are the odds that she's going to manage to escape again um especially because she's not sort of like modified her behavior anyway and she's still one of these social outcast women that are going to be targeted so it does rather feel like the book has kind of given her a happy ending a stay of execution but only for so long eventually that's going to be taken away and she's going to, to suffer again so it kind of feels like i've sort of wasted some of my time reading the book because you know she was in a shit position at the beginning of it and now she's in a shit position at the end and nothing's really changed so it, it made it less satisfying for me but i can understand why it was done because it's kind of a fun thing to link those things together and have some foreshadowing but at the same time a little bit depressing is all, is, is what i'm going to call it but overall i did enjoy it it was it was uh, like a, a nice kind of historical novel quite slow comparatively to like other books that i've read but again i think that was just because of what i've been reading recently and then coming into this so it's a good historical novel it definitely tells you a lot about like the witch trials in england a lot about the kind of political side of things behind it uh and Although I wasn't kind of wild about the characterization of Matthew as someone who was doing these things because he was either kind of mentally ill or traumatized, um, he does get what's coming to him in the end. So he's definitely still the villain of the piece. Um, and I find it interesting that this kind of fictionalized version of his sister, uh, I find that like an interesting device to use to to look at the story so it was quite interesting definitely recommend if you would like to recommend any other books i promise that i will actually write down the name of the person who has recommended it so that i can actually thank them um, but if you'd like to recommend any drop them in the youtube comments that's definitely the way to make sure that i will see them or um you can get in touch by email but i check that incredibly sporadically uh and may not see it for some time but in the meantime, thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next episode.